digestive system. We'll begin with the esophagus, the bolus, a round ball of food rolling down, wrapped in mucins. It's going to pass by the LES, lower esophageal sphincter. And this is an area where a person has reflux or GERD. That valve becomes swollen. A lot of the damage occurs at night, so if a person can sleep with a wedge, kind of elevate the head, no big meals before bed, sometimes that's enough. The stomach. Now we have different regions such as the fundus on the hump side, the cardia, this is all body here, and then we have the uh, pylorus region. The reason we name these different areas is that we want to know where is the uh, ulcer? Is it up high? Is it in the cardia? Is it in the body? Pylorus. These are important uh, aspects to know. Rugae are just the oh, wrinkles that help compress and mash the food up as it passes on to the small intestine. First segment is the duodenum. And here we begin real absorption because up to this point we're just kind of moving uh, material around. And we start absorbing and we travel into the jejunum, which is extensive. And the last part of the small intestine called the ileum is going to empty into the first segment of the colon. And that segment is called the cecum. And this little pouch here, it's a finger-like projection called the appendix, is full of bacteria. So let's say you have severe diarrhea and a lot of beneficial bacteria are expelled from your colon. Then we get to recolonize it. These bacteria are going to move back out. And they're lifesavers because they, they produce vitamin K, they process cholesterol. Uh, we cannot live without these gut bacteria. Okay, from the cecum, ascending colon upwards. At the turn on the uh, liver side is the hepatic flexure. And it goes across the transverse colon. There's a big omentum here where we store belly fat. You can't see it. On the spleen side, there's a spleen. Splenic flexure and then descending colon, patient's left side, and it's going to make a turn called the sigmoid down to the rectum, a little storage area. There's a sphincter here and the anus, and peri means around perianus. Now, this is a region a lot of people don't understand. They, uh, some will uh, treat it like a vagina, but it's not a durable tissue. Um, so let's not use it that way because hemorrhoids and bleeding can result. Okay, I didn't mention the pancreas, but here we have the insulin production that helps process some of our glucose, make it absorb into the bloodstream. And then we have lobes of the liver. We have the patient's left lobe and we have the patient's right lobe. And then underneath for processing fats, emulsifies fats, is this little gallbladder that just stores bile and releases it. Uh, to help us uh, break apart fats. There you have it, digestive system.